we have I would say two different uh, group of patients. Those after BPH surgery between 50 and 70 or 75 years. But I have another group, which is the um, group of patients with idiopathic structure that are usually younger than the first one. So also the age, especially if you don't have a history of BPH surgery, can guide you between the differential diagnosis between BPH problem and urethrostricture problem. It is very uncommon that a guy that has inability to void or difficulty in voiding and poor urinary flow with a age below 40 years old that he has BPH uh, issues. So what we have currently for treatment of urethral strictures um, in the, I would say, effective wave, uh, we have uh, endoscopic procedure, what I used to call minimal invasive procedure and open procedure. So there are two different uh, um, categories with different uh, post-surgical management, complications, and also impact on the patients. When we have a stricture, usually in the first episode or at first recurrence, and it's usually a stricture short, and best, especially if you want to try urethrotomy of the bulbary area, um, urethrotomy, DVIU, direct visual internal urethrotomy, is the best choice, especially if the patient is at the first or second episodes. But we have to remember sometimes what general urologists don't know Urethrotomy cannot, cannot be offered in penal stricture because the amount of fibrosis and the risk of creating fistula and extravasation of the urethra is so high that this procedure should not be recommended in patients with uh, penile urethral stricture or fossa navicularis urethral stricture. Conversely, um, when it comes to the um, endoscopic or minimal invasive treatment, dilatation is still an option for patient, even for those having a penal urethral stricture. Dilatation can be done with catheter with the progressively larger size. It can be done also with a balloon and is a procedure that works. And it can also be repeated, especially in those patients that you don't want to be treated surgically because they're compromised due to comorbidity, they are older, uh, so they are not good candidate for surgery. Besides these two traditional, I would say, armamentarium, we have also the uh, optilium uh, drug-coated balloon dilatation of the urethra. Uh, we have received um, lately the result of the five-year outcomes for this uh, technique. Uh, it is basically a dilatation of the urethra promoted by a balloon that uh, it is introduced endoscopically in the urethra of the patient across the stricture, then dilated. Um, and it can reach up to 30 charriers of dilatation. So it gives a um, massive dilatation of the stricture. And contemporarily, it releases also a medication called paclitaxel, which we have seen that is particularly effective in reducing the fibrosis um, at the corpus spongiosum, at the level of the stricture. So it reduces the rate of recurrence of the stricture better as compared to DVIU. But I believe, especially because many patients ask me to perform the optilium balloon dilatation also at their primary episode, that it works even better when the stricture have never been received any treatment before, like no urethrotomy or no DVU. What happens if these treatments fail, uh, which can happen frequently, especially after DVU or dilatation? Then you don't have to rush with the patient with urethral stricture because you know that stricture has the um, ability, uh, uncommon and unpleasant ability to come back frequently. And especially if a patient is very young, you have to deal with the disease for a long time. And you cannot use all the resources of the patient uh, in the first place. Resources, I mean uh, tissue that you can use for reconstruct the urethra. We have different approach to solve the problem of the, of the patient. But when you choose urethroplasty and you have to choose the source of matilia to reconstruct the urethra, then you have to count that uh, the two most common sources of tissue to augment the urethra are the prepuce and the buccal graft. So the prepuce, it can be used one or twice. Buccal graft, 
um, if the stricture is not too long, you can use each cheek uh, to take up to six or seven centimeter of uh, uh, buccal graft mucosa to reconstruct the urethra. So it gives you a very good source of tissue to reconstruct the urethra. Every time you make a consultation in this patient, you have to be careful of the disease characteristic, the age of the patient, the surgery you are offering, and what you have as a source of tissue. There are many options. You can also use, for example, lingual mucosa. It's painful for the patient, but it's still a source of uh, uh, tissue for augmentation. You can use also lower limb uh, for reconstruction. And if it doesn't have a prepuce, probably because he had received surgery, then it starts, it starts the problem. Because if you start lacking of resources to reconstruct the urethra, then you have to invent. So we have options. We can use the um, uh, airless uh, steam of the patients. For example, the lower abdomen, the back. Of course, these sources are not the best because the, the skin here is thicker. So the urethral reconstruction can be difficult and not optimal. Some researcher, especially I think in Brazil, they presented also case series where they tried to use um, uh, bladder mucosa uh, as a um, substitution for urethral reconstruction, uh, which is not easy to be harvested, especially if you think that the patient has a urethral stricture. And in the past, we also use rectal mucosa. So options are there. Maybe results suboptimal because the best tissue um, for reconstructing the urethra remain the um, uh, prepuce and the oral cavity, but you have option and you should consider this option in the patient uh, facing this problem, especially if he's young, because if he's young, stricture may recur in the future and you should be prepared of that and you should have plan to solve the problem again. Based on the um, robust three trials, we know that uh, urethral stricture recurrence in patients treated with drug-coated balloon. The um, success rate is around 71-73% after three years from surgery, which is uh, um, uh, higher as compared to barely 30% of success rate after one year of DIU. Case series are different and results are different. So there are results that say that DVIU is effective even up to 80-90% if it's done as a first attempt in very selected uh, patients. I would say um, it depends on the case series, um, the result of this uh, uh, um, uh, surgical procedure for urethral stricture. So you have to be careful in patient selection. I usually do never perform an astomotic urethroplasty which is an end-to-end -end reconstruction of the urethra, just cutting out the stricture segment and rejoining the two urethral strum together because this creates and gives the patient a huge and an impact on their sexual function. And surgery, which is called EPA, excision and primary anastomosis, so end-to-end -end reconstruction, it is usually offered to patients after urethral trauma. Because in Western countries, security in driving, security in bicycle, or also road traffic accident uh, do not uh, lead to urethral trauma and urethral stricture anymore with the same frequency that it was in the past and it still be in developing country. So I don't see many patients with urethral stricture due to the trauma. I always perform augmented urethroplasty. As I told you before, augmented means opening the urethra and augment the lumen of the urethra with the substitution material like the prepuce, buccal graph, or whatsoever you want to use and you can use. So this technique has lower impact on sexual function. There still be some, of course. It is known, literature describe it, a certain amount and certain percentage of sexual dysfunction which can be worse in elderly patients because they recover less, and, um, but it's still there also in young patients. So it's most of the time what I say, a definitive treatment which will solve the problem. Some rates of, um, I would say, failing, we have it, uh, also because 
with times graph may lose its elasticity, his ability structure may recur, also because other events may uh, determine new structure for the patients.